In this video we're going to review the LAS Legend uh, set display settings and also just a brief introduction to the live view filter and uh, why it's important to use that. So we've already loaded our uh, LAS data. Uh, by default you should see this uh, displayed in elevation gradient view and uh, we're going to it's display by points. We're going to change that from points to display a tin surface. All right. And so by default in the LAS, LAS legend up here, uh, we're displaying by elevation gradient. As I zoom in, you'll see that change. Okay. So um, as we're zoomed out, it's going to be pretty large changes in elevation for the colors to be different. As I zoom in, it's going to take. Uh, less of an elevation change to show um, dramatic changes in the the way the color is represented on the screen. It's just a really good general way to visualize uh, the data such as stockpiles or, or just changes in elevation. You can see that uh, vehicles and conveyors are really popping out as well as uh, vegetation. So we've got vegetation in between these stockpiles. It's really easy to visualize that here. And if we have especially noisy data, such as really heavy vegetation, you can see it's going to show as being quite noisy in this view. Uh, the next display I want to review is uh, elevation by uh, color bands. It's kind of a um, graphical or uh, representation of contours. As you can see here, we I believe we, by default, we have a two foot contour interval. As you can see as I zoom in and out, that display is not changing. And this is really useful for uh, seeing the edges of stockpiles just to make sure that uh, you know, you've got your uh, uh, stockpile extents uh, defined correctly. Uh, usually for these uh, drone drive data sets, where uh, our ground sample distance is maybe an inch, two inches, something like that, maybe even a little bit less. Uh, showing this as two foot contours just really doesn't give you a good uh, idea of the resolution of the data and it's kind of hard to uh, d uh, see the edges of uh, where these stockpiles begin. So usually I'll go into the live view filter uh, click on the elevation tab, go to symbology. Uh, we can change the, uh, not only can we change that previous view we're looking at the elevation gradient, uh, but we can also change our color band settings. We can change that uh, interval, just like a contour interval. I'm going to change that to half foot. And uh, this is going to be whatever unit uh, that your data is in. This happens to be feet. so. Uh, You'd want to change it if you were doing meters. You wanted to represent feet. You just want to make sure that that meters uh, meets the conversion for to feet. And I want to do a sharp transition. You can change this to a smooth transition, but I find that uh, seeing those edges of uh, where those elevation changes are happening is easier to visualize. If we have a sharp transition, let's go ahead and click OK. I'm going to close this, and it's going to ask me, "Hey, do you want to save?" Uh, the changes you've made to the to the display settings here. I'm going to say yes. Uh, we could create a new. Uh, this is called a. Again, this is a live view filter. We could create a new filter just for color bands, just to represent that. I'm just going to update uh, the existing, uh, showing all points uh, live view filter with the color band settings that I want. I'm going to click OK. That way, uh, whenever. Uh, I exit LP360 and come in later and work on another project. It's still going to be half foot uh, visualization of those color bands. And you can see if we zoom in on this stockpile here, there's a really, it's really easy to see where that um, stockpile is really beginning. You can see it's a little bit more accurate representation of that. Okay. All right. So the next option we have here is display by classification. Uh, this data was pulled in directly from Metashape. That's where we've derived our point cloud from. As you can see, 
Uh, everything is in a single classification. It's in created, never classified, class zero. Uh, if we had some classifications here, uh, we would see um, possibly these uh, vehicles, buildings, vegetation, different colors. In a little bit here, we'll set up the live view filter uh, to display only on classified. And let's say we had done some classifications uh, and we're just wanting to see uh, data that hasn't been classified yet. Uh, we could set the filter up to, to show show that uh, for this view. And all these views can be uh, seen in a profile view, uh, 3D view, and so on. We're going to display by intensity. We can do that. Monochromatic. Return combination because uh, this uh, is data derived from photography. We just have a single return. If this is LiDAR data, uh, we would see uh, different colors here representing different return combinations possibly uh, just for this uh, data set from, you know, we've taken pictures from a drone. This is what we're going to see, just a single return combination. Display by point source ID. It's all the same. Uh, this is a really nice uh, feature for, you know, we've, we've derived these uh, points from photo, uh, photography, so we've, every point has an RGB value. Okay. Display by file. This is a single file, but normally you would have multiple files. You can see how they're broken down uh, with that view. Display by elevation difference. Okay. And display by point density. So you can see the edges here with the vegetation. I think it's pretty noisy. We've got some uh, on the outliers of our project. We've got less point density, but uh, for the most part, um, our project's uh, process in Metashape, it's going to have uh, the same point density throughout the project. We'll switch back to display by elevation gradient. Uh, let's briefly look at the live view filter. Let's go to the classification tab. Now you can see here that the count is in black and that means that um, this has been scanned previously to see where the points are located. Uh, that means I haven't done any changes to the classification recently. Um, so probably uh, a, a extremely accurate representation of where the points are classification wise. Uh, let's If this is uh, in red that means some changes are, have occurred or maybe uh, LP360 is estimating where those uh, what classification those points are in. So if that's the case, if you see this as displayed in red, you can hit scan and um, LP360 will do a full scan of all the points and just uh, tell you very accurately where those points are located classification wise. So just a nice feature there. Let's say uh, we want to display just unclassified. We've done some uh, manual classification or some low point noise uh, classification on this data set using some different tasks uh, in LP360. Uh, we'll just uh, simply toggle all the classes off. I'll just choose created never classified and uh, we can click the save button up here. Let's create a new point cloud, uh, a new live view filter called unclassified. Click OK. Now we have that to choose from in the drop down. And this will be extended to our 3D, and um, we can choose it in our 3D and our profile views as well. You can see by default we already have a ground. A classification that you can use. So if you had your points and say ground, you just want to display those, you could easily do that here. Um, by default, you're showing all points. And then of course the other default one is canopy. Um, so it's just a very uh, brief introduction into the live view filter and also showing off those uh, last legend display settings.